Hi guys, it's another week and welcome to Daily Buzz. We're bringing you all the stories that we're buzzing this weekend in a minute. So stick and stay. So welcome guys, happy new week. Let's get into it. There is so much that happened over the weekend. Oh my God, let's get into the hottest one. The one that has got everybody talking. Elekem Kumoji and Kofi Ajololo. Young, meat, old, bush, bash, bush, bash everywhere on air. But let's, let's get into the background. So if you guys um, remember, last week, Kofi Ajololo had an exclusive and explosive interview where he revealed that some movie producers, about seven of them, owe him money and they are not paying. Now, after that interview went out and everybody was talking, Elikem Kumoji took his phone and did a video where he advised his fellow actors to get a day job so that they wouldn't have to rely on uh, movie producers to make money, which a lot of people felt was very wrong, considering that... Um, Kofi Ajololo had just spoken about people paying them and you come and say that they should get day jobs. Like, that is their day job. So if I'm working and you're not paying me, I have every right to come and demand for money. You have no right to say that I should get another day job to supplement what I actually do. So a lot of people felt he was taking a job at Kofi Ajololo. Now, he has come out to say that went from a zero to a hundred real quick because he was not in any way talking directly to to Kofi Ajololu and apologized. However, over the weekend um, on OKFM, on their, one of the entertainment shows, they were having a discussion and Kofi Ajololu was in the studio and Elekem was also in the studio. So Kofi Ajololu went at Elekem and, and, and told him he was very, very disappointed. He said what he said and that he had read that Elekem had apologized, but he doesn't need his apologies. If he has any apology, he should go give it to his father, his late father, um, in the grave, so he should go to the graveside and then go offer his apologies. But he, Kofi Ajolo, doesn't need it because he actually worked for Elekem's father, which Elekem thought was a bit too harsh because he didn't directly jab Kofi and now he had apologized and now Kofi Ajolo is saying this, so he says he takes his apology back. <laughs> Which got me confused because in the first place, Kofi says he does not even need the apology. So what are you taking back? I mean, Elekem. Elekem, for me, I'm, on the personal stand, he is wrong on so many levels. But let, let's put my aside and let's talk about other celebrities who feel he is absolutely in the wrong. So if you have Schwarzenegger, you know, took to Instagram as he, she always does, made a video and told Elekem that, see, you are wrong. You should give respect where it's due and not everybody makes money from sugar mummies like you do. Um, comedian David Oscar also took a jab at him, which also led to another brouhaha between them. Um, Achipalago, Chris Wado. I mean, a lot of Vicky Zuga all had very, you know, hateful things to say to Elekem because they felt he downright disrespected Kofi Ajolo. So let me know in the comment section, do you, whose side are you on? Do you think um, people are overreacting to what Elekem said or do you think it is right that people crucify him for what he said for being wrong? You know, so drop in the comment section and let me know. Now let me move on to my next story. And this story actually blew my mind. You know, when I, when I read this story and there was a video to it, I was like, no way. Maybe the writer Mis misquoted what the person said so I was going to watch the video and after watching the video the three minutes video and I was shook shook so apparently there's a high life musician who goes by the name I him for I have never heard it before I have never heard any of his songs but he says in an interview that yes it's sad Kofi B passed away but it's a blessing in disguise from God to him because he and Kofi B had the same style of music. They sang the same way. And, and he feels like God took Kofi B out of the way to give him time to shine so that Ghanaians will love him and Ghanaians will accept him and make his career glow. And I'm like, bro, you need a slap. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm like, how is the interviewer even sitting there listening to all of this? I would use the microphone to smack your mouth because nobody. I mean, Kofi B has not even been buried. How do you disrespect him in such a way saying that it's good God took him out of the way for you to shine? We don't even know you. You won't even shine. <laughs> I'm sorry, guys. It's so painful that people will take out other people's heads and try to make it about them. I I am, I am forcing myself to believe that he only said it for clout so that people's attention would be drawn to him. But either way, it's just 
something too wrong to say. I mean, uh, make it stop. Just, just wrong. Too wrong. I'll be back, guys. I'll be back. <laughs> Okay guys, welcome back. So I'm moving on to my third story pretty quickly. And Wendy Shea, Rising Bell, Ghana ring, <laughs> ringing bell, madam, trend machine. Um, last week, there was a prophecy that she was going to be kidnapped. And then she tweeted and said people should leave their pastor to be. And he has the right to say what he wants and blah, blah, blah. And yeah, so a lot of people who were, you know, attacking the pastor kind of went numb because the person who is in question says it's okay it's all right so let it go but not only did she end it on her tweet she actually took a trip to the pastor's church now according to her god reveals to it reveals to redeem so if the pastor had gotten that revelation then she's gone to see him so that he will do whatever necessary there is to be done to redeem him so she visited the church she had the microphone she was talking gave a little something something ministration song ministration whatever it was but yeah so all those who were worried about wendy shea being kidnapped she had gone and hopefully she'll be redeemed and the prophecy will never come to pass amen <laughs> Now to my last story, guys, and I'm taking you international to the Oscars. Oscars 2020 happened last night um, in Los Angeles. Oh, the red carpet looks. I mean, this is what we live for, right? Award season is all about the looks, the styles, the crazy, the bad, the good, the ugly. And last night, the celebrities brought it. A1 from um, Billy Porter, Scarlett Johansson, um, Nicole Kidman, Natalie Portman, um, Regina King, all of your favorites, Billy Eilish. I mean, she had the weirdest look, by the way. She looked very, very off. I don't know what's going on with the Chanel and the green hair, but there are so many amazing stars. Chrissy and her husband, John Legend. Oh, a dream, a dream, a dream, a dream. But let's talk about the awards itself. Now, if you guys haven't watched the South Korean movie called Parasite, you need to watch it now because it won the biggest awards of the night. It got four awards and also won the ultimate award for best picture. It also won best director and the movie is so good and it's the first time a non-English speaking movie has won the best picture award. So that should tell you guys how amazing and good Parasite is um, now. Um, Joker also won some awards, um, the movie 1917, 1971, one of them also won um, lots of awards. So yeah, the Oscars 2020. It's 2020, you know, fresh in the year, so it's award season. We'll be seeing a lot of red carpets, a lot of award season all around. And we'll be right here to bring you all the news, all the details, all the juice. Do not forget to look out for this week's episode of Pigeon Bass with the Juice Master and the Juice Mistress. Trending GH will also be coming your way. And also look out for all the stories running this week on www.amiyadebra.com. Follow me on IG. It's I am Jackie underscore JQ. And follow us on Amiyad TV, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. And subscribe to our YouTube channel at Amiyad TV Official. Till next week. Oh, I'm out. <laughs>